Google pitched AI Max as a simple switch you could just turn on and it will basically skyrocket your campaign performance. Simply enable AI Max and their clever algorithms and AI targeting will find more leads and sales than your setup ever could. It kind of sounds like magic, right? But does it actually work? Well, lucky for you guys, I have been putting AI Max to the test and what I want to share with you today it's exactly what happened. But first, for the uninitiated amongst us, I want to give you a quick lesson on what exactly AI Max is. Okay, quick lesson on AI Max. What I'm going to do is show you exactly what it does with a campaign in a typical setup, starting from the most narrow targeting all the way up to what AI Max is trying to do. So think about it as kind of expanding your campaign. In the middle, you'll have exact match. Outside of that, you of course have phrase match. And outside of that, you've got broad match. So you've got exact phrase and broad, and each one is expanding your campaign in terms of volume that it can find. So exact phrase, broad, they expand the campaign. And then outside of broad, you have AI Max. So AI Max is outside of broad because of the simple reason it can go beyond even what broad match keywords can do. Because think about it. When people are discovering products and services, they don't just think, I'm going to go to Google and type in exactly what this service is, or even about reviews. There'll be peripheral searches during the research phase and from former searches that have taken place that the customer may think of. And broad match even can't reach those terms or see that level of intent, which is where AI Max comes in, because it can see that level of intent. So think of it as expanding your campaign beyond even the borders of a broad match setup. But even that's not all, because of course going beyond the remit of broad match is good, but also what's interesting is the use of assets and content in how AI Max can find customers. So of course when somebody goes to Google, they type in something very specific, like for example if I thought of something like Blue Brogue shoes. Now if you were thinking about Blue Brogues as a search term, you wouldn't necessarily have that as a specific ad group in a large, you know, e-commerce fashion campaign. It's way too niche to potentially give it its own ad group, especially when you consider that using a unified strategy in the era of AI and simplification is going to work for you better. So instead, what AI Max will do is it will look at your landing pages. So you have a web page here. This web page is for blue shoes. Forgive the terrible writing, I type, I don't write, so there you go. Um, so you've got Blue Shoes as a web page in your campaign. Now, what AI Max can do, it won't just use the landing page, because of course a dynamic campaign can do that anyway. What AI Max can do is look at the content on that page, and then guess what? It can lift that content and put it into your ad on Google. So what does that do? It means your conversion rate is going to increase because the landing page it's chosen is going to be most relevant to the person looking for those blue brogues. And it also means that the content from your website can be pulled into the ad in real time and the information pertaining to what the customer is looking for can be pulled in as well. So AI Max is an, a lift above broad match, but it's also a lift above a dynamic search campaign because again, with a dynamic campaign, you can, can the dynamic ads can control the headline but ultimately to control the ad content itself, because you write your own description with a dynamic setup, this instead uses the content in the landing page and also your assets from your existing ads as well in order to pull that information into the ad to improve your click-through rate and to deliver the most relevant landing page to the customer as well. So you can kind of see why AI Max is expansive because it goes beyond broad, but it also expands beyond the remit of what your ads can do as well in isolation. So now you understand how AI Max actually works. Let me show you a campaign where I implemented AI Max because the results, they're interesting. Okay, so this campaign you're looking at, well, you can't see the campaign details because it's redacted for obvious reasons, but this campaign is in the fashion space in the UK. Now, with this campaign, we can see here the data for at least the last kind of six weeks or so. And what we're seeing here is that generally speaking for this campaign, performance has been okay, pretty flat, um, not the best, not amazing. It's one of those campaigns where it's kind of playing second fiddle to the main kind of Pmax and shopping campaign. It's an exper it's an incremental campaign to bring more sales into the business, even if the ROAS isn't as high as it could be on shopping. So that's the perfect candidate for using AI Max. And that's exactly what we did in this campaign. So this campaign was running, you can see the run rate here, and you will have no prizes for guessing it was on this Monday, we switched on AI Max. Really strange, it kind of initially spiked almost instantaneously in performance. It jumped up 
over like instantly, which is very strange. I wouldn't say this is going to be an expected outcome of when you run AI Max campaigns, but it's something that happened in this campaign, which is interesting. Now, when I turned it on and this happened, I thought, oh, wow, this could be absolutely amazing. But of course, it was an early first kind of um, foray. It was kind of the first kind of, I suppose, time AI Max was running and results did settle back down. But what I can say is that there was an increase that week compared to the previous weeks in both conversions, but not the ROAS. ROAS remained pretty static with one exception towards the end of the test, which is quite recently. But overall, it did bring in more conversions. More conversions have come in in this period than in the previous period of the campaign. So it, it did provide the incremental conversions that were promised. In fact, let's change this to a weekly view so you can better demonstrate this. So you can see here, the last couple of weeks of running with AI Max has seen an increase in the volume of conversions. And now this is the thing about AI Max. It will find you more sales if all the criteria are met. And we'll talk about those criteria in a second. Now, with this kind of campaign, there's enough conversion volume here for it to work. We can see that previously when we were running the campaign that the results in terms of the conversion volume wasn't as high as it has been for the last couple of weeks. One thing to remain clear here, though, is that the ROAS hasn't moved. The ROAS hasn't improved. It's not bought efficiencies. So AI Max is never going to make your campaigns more efficient. It's going to make you have more conversion volume. And in fact, in this campaign, it's actually pretty good because it hasn't increased the ROAS. It's already decreased the ROAS. The campaign hasn't lost any efficiency. With a lot of AI Max campaigns I've discussed with um, other PPC professionals and other businesses, it works in delivering more conversions, but actually what tends to happen is the efficiency starts to decline. The ROAS starts to decrease, but as long as those decreases or declines are in line with your business goals and your overall volume in the business is what you're targeting, then that can work out really well for you. But that's something to consider. There is a balance between the value of conversion and the ROAS you're getting and the volume of conversions you're getting because AI Max is going to go after volume, not efficiency. Please remember that. So now you understand what the results are in this campaign after turning on AI Max as this experiment. And granted, we're only two weeks in, you know, weeks and weeks down the line, things might become very different. But from what I can see early on in this campaign, the signs look pretty good. So overall, I don't think, in, in my opinion, it, you know, AI Max is going to harm this campaign long term. The early stages look like it's actually really, really positive. So in reality, I think it's a low risk effort using AI Max. So now you understand what AI Max is and the results I've seen in a campaign example where I have tested AI Max in full. So the question you're going to be asking me right now is, Darren, should I run AI Max in my campaigns? And I would say it depends on the answers to these five criteria. Number one, you're going to need lots of conversion data. Think of conversion data as feeding the beast. You don't want it to go hungry. This AI machine needs its dinner. So you need to feed the beast with plenty of conversion data. Remember, conversions are directing the bidding algorithm. The more direction it gets, think of every conversion like an instruction, the better the future prospects of AI Max targeting will be. Google will know where to expand. And as a result of that, you're going to get better results. Less data means less directions. And of course, you don't want directionless AI running your campaigns. So you need a decent amount of data. How much data specifically? Well, there's not really a rule or a law for this. It's basically down to what you perceive in your campaigns. For example, if you're running a campaign generating leads and you've had 30 leads in the last 30 days, that's a pretty good benchmark. Of course, you'd ideally want a bit more data, but that's kind of the minimum threshold personally I would use when looking at the prospects of running AI Max. Anything less, and I'm pretty much going to hesitate whether or not it's going to give me the uplift in sales that I'm looking for. The second criteria to consider is is your target area big enough for Google to find a meaningful increase in conversions? Think about it. If you're targeting just a 10 mile radius around your store or your business, there's not a huge amount of customers in there that are gonna be looking for your products and services. So when you use AI Max, you're not really gonna get much of an increment because there's not much of a pool to fish in. Again, I keep using these analogies like feeding the beast and fishing in a pool, but it's kind of like that. So think about it as a big pool, you're fishing for a lot of customers and you can't find all the fish. 
Google's bidding algorithm is going to fill in that gap to help you find more fish. If your pool is already small, you can basically see to the bottom, if there's no fish there, then you're kind of fishing in a pool there's no point in fishing in. I hope that made sense, but ultimately, you need to make sure your target area is big enough. If you're doing a national campaign or targeting a major metropolitan area, then you're going to be in a good position for AI Max to give you that increment in performance you're looking for. If you're targeting a small area, uh, not so much. It won't be as powerful as it would be with a bigger target area. Sticking with the fishing analogy, you also need to make sure your industry is wide ranging enough to deliver good results with AI Max. If you're doing something very niche, very specialist, potentially in the B2B sector, then finding customers with AI Max is going to be more difficult than if you're in the retail sector, selling to a large amount of people like in fashion or kitchenware or whatever it might be, where a lot of people could be your customers. AI Max is going to do better with that kind of business than it would with a B2B or very niche service business. So consider that when you're testing AI Max. Again, going back to that fishing analogy, stay with the biggest pools possible when testing AI Max. Criteria number four is to make sure you have great diversification of landing pages within your niche. Because remember, AI Max isn't just about keywords and ads, it also looks at the content of your website as well and the landing pages available to the system. The better diversification and segmentation of your landing pages, the more tools AI Max has to use when bidding on Google for you. Think about a kitchen company. You could have marble worktops, you could have wooden kitchens, traditional kitchens, modern kitchens, minimalist. You've got all these different criteria, different categories, and if you put that data into an AI Max campaign to find customers based on all of those criteria, you're going to do quite well from using AI Max. Now flip that around and imagine you're a kitchen company with one landing page. There's less diversification, less opportunity for Google to use the content on your website in order to better find customers with AI Max. So make sure you've got a good repertoire of landing pages and plenty of options for the system to use. And staying on the subject of content, the fifth criteria to consider whether you should use AI Max or not is going to be down to your assets and landing page content because of course, AI Max is content driven. It's going to look at your existing assets in Google Ads. It's going to look at the actual content of your landing pages. So if your content of your landing pages and your assets like headlines and descriptions and all of those different assets you use in your setup, if they're not very good, Google isn't really going to have much to go on in order to manipulate your ads in order to show to more people to get those incremental gains using AI Max. Make sure your ads are hitting those USPs and benefits, describing exactly what the benefits are to the service, that they are selling what you do in the best way possible with good content, because that's going to, again, feed the beast and make sure AI Max can find more customers based on your data in your campaigns and also, of course, your assets in your ads as well. And don't just leave it to the Google Ads side of things, of course. Your landing page needs to be strong as well. Make sure you're promoting those USPs and benefits on your landing page, describing the service, pre pre presenting plenty of detail and information to people that they can use to make a good decision. And that's going to also help AI Max as well. So make sure your content is spot on and powerful because that will massively help as well. So if you meet those five criteria, I'm more than confident you'll be okay giving AI Max a test because ultimately there are very few areas in Google Ads in the modern era that are worth testing. You know, you think of Google Ads back in the day to now, there are so many less levers we as PPC professionals or entrepreneurs have to control campaigns. So something like AI Max, which is literally just a toggle switch, is a really good test. It's a really good way to kind of see if you can get incremental sales and it's worth doing if you meet those five criteria. So guys, give it a shot and let me know in the comments how you get on testing AI Max or maybe you've used AI Max before yourself. Let me know in the comments. We'll have a little chat about it down there. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the other videos on the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.